He puts the teeth in terror. Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, stars Kate Hodge, Ken Foray, and is directed by Jeff Burr. What are you doing over there? Mountain Dew getting all up in my background, yo. What's up, guys? We are down to two Texas Chainsaw reviews. We got this one, Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, and then we got Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Generation. Now, I haven't seen Next Generation, but I have heard horrible, horrible things, so I hate to end this thing on such a bad movie. But first, let's go ahead and talk about Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. I had never seen this movie before recently. And that's kind of nice because I had no idea what to expect going in. I didn't really uh, put feelers out to get people's opinions on this one. I kind of wanted to go in just completely fresh and, you know, see what, see what I liked. Now, I did some research on the behind the scenes on this one, and it's actually one of the more interesting ones if you dig a little deeper behind the scenes. This was New Line's first try at uh, the Leatherface franchise. As you know, they had the, the Nightmare franchise, but they wanted to get other horror franchises under their belt. Cheap horror movies was really where they wanted to kind of focus all their strength on. And right away, they got themselves in trouble because how do you follow up two excellent Texas Chainsaw movies you know, there's a lot of pressure here. To live up to those two movies, you are almost destined for failure. I feel so bad for director Jeff Burr because that's what he was dealing with. Producers were constantly all over this guy, and really, he didn't have a chance. It's very similar to David Fincher's experience with Alien 3, and I hate it when studios do this. They take a young director, they throw him to the wolves, and they don't really give him a chance. So. I took that into consideration going into this movie, and you know what? It's not bad. It's not the best Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie, but it's definitely not as bad as I thought it would be. Now, first off, let's get into the plot. Uh, much like the rest of the Texas Chainsaw movies, you got this: these college students, they're coming from California, they're on a road trip, and they end up getting stuck in the wrong place at the wrong time. And they run into this weird guy at this gas station who you might recognize. It's freaking Viggo Mortensen. A lot of really big actors, they get their start in horror movies. So it was really cool to see actually Viggo Mortensen in this. And he actually doesn't do a bad job. And right away, you're not sure what to think of his character. And then later, you find out that he is actually one of the, the Sawyer clan. But not to get too ahead of myself, the couple, they end up going to this gas station. And then Ryan actually ends up being captured by the Sawyers. And one thing I love about Texas Chainsaw movies that other slasher horror movies don't usually have is a really whacked out crazy family. It's just another added dynamic. You, Cause you could just go off a of leather face alone and be entertained, but you have this family that has really interesting people. You got the psychotic little girl, you got kind of the brains behind the organization, but he's still crazy. And then you got mom who uses a, a, a voice box because her voice is all jacked up. And the one common denominator about all of them is they're just whacked out of their minds. They're sadistic, uh, cannibalistic even, and they torture this couple. And that's just another fun thing about uh, the victims in these movies is really watching uh, their descent into insanity. But the final girl in this is Kate Hodge, and you might recognize her from the movie Rapid Fire with Brandon Lee. And I think she's a really capable final girl. She kind of reminds me of Kirstie from Hellraiser. Also, the real saving grace for this couple, especially Kate Hodge, is Ken Foray. He is this uh, survivalist type character who just kind of ends up showing up out of nowhere. And he's really a badass. And Ken Foray is just a really entertaining person to watch on screen. He was in Dawn of the Dead, he was in The Devil's Rejects, and also Rob Zombie's Halloween. And he's probably one of the most likable people in this movie. Now this movie is definitely not perfect. Let's get into some of the problems. You'll notice I didn't mention Leatherface and the pros. Leatherface isn't bad in this, but he's definitely not really that entertaining. This might be the least entertaining Leatherface of the bunch. As a matter of fact, I'll even go ahead and say that the family is more entertaining than Leatherface is really. I mean, he does his Leatherface thing. That's, you know, he chases people with his chainsaw. And yes, it's cool, but we've seen it so many times before. But for me, the real entertainment value of this movie was the family and how crazy they were. <laughs> Even the little girl had some really entertaining scenes. Also, the acting isn't the best in this. 
I mean, you can tell that there are some production problems here. Everything that was happening behind the scenes, it does kind of show up on the screen. And one of my biggest problems with this type of movie is the first two movies, one of them was more of a serious tone, the second one was more of a comedic tone. So this one doesn't really succeed at either one of those. It tries to kind of fit in both those worlds and it really just doesn't work in the long run. The first two Texas movies are excellent because they're so unique. Uh, they kind of establish their own genres. And the third one does none of that. So in the end, I would definitely give it a humdrum. But if you're a Texas Chainsaw fan, I definitely recommend giving it a shot. So anyway, guys, what are your thoughts on Leatherface, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 3? Looking forward to hearing them. Also, be sure to jump on over to Killer Flicks and become a member of our Facebook group. If you look right down there, you can see all my social media links. Also, if you want to support Drum Dums, be sure to check out my Patreon page. Anyway, guys, thank you so much, and Rum Dum out.